Good afternoon everyone and welcome to the webinar on Six Habits of Successful Speakers. So Peter Dew is my name, most of you know me but a few don't. I'm a public speaking trainer and coach and my passion is helping people find their voice so they can contribute to society, they can put their message across, they can speak up despite fear or despite any other concerns. Most of you know that I'm a person who stutters and I've come to this space of public speaking training and coaching from a position of not being able to speak and that makes me fairly unique and it also makes me well aware of people's fear and their anxiety and their nervousness around public speaking because that was my life for 40 years. So why six habits of successful speakers? Really quite simple. We all know of mentors, we all know of coaches, we all know of those champions. So one of the things that I like to do is watch other speakers and watch what they do and analyze them. And you can do this from conferences, you can do this from TED Talks or YouTube videos. What is it that those speakers do exceptionally well that makes them connect with the audience, makes them influential, makes them persuasive? So that's what I, what I want to cover in the half hour that I have with you today. So before we move on, uh, so how to participate, please ask questions as we go or even make comments. So if you don't agree with something I say or you want me to explain it further, two ways of participating and asking questions. Number one, at any time, at any time type into the dialogue box what your question or what your comment is or as we tested earlier on, you can put your hand up and I will open up your microphone and you can ask the question across the webinar. Take notes as we go and apply the information to yourself, to your own personal circumstances and one of the practical ways of doing that is to cast your mind back to a recent presentation that you've done or to the contrary, cast your mind forward to a presentation you've got coming up what could have you done differently or what can you do, what can you incorporate in your upcoming presentation as a result of what you've learnt from this afternoon's webinar. So it's about making practical use of some of the tips, some of the knowledge I'm going to share with you. Rather than just listen and think and take notes and then not apply, I would rather you apply, I'd rather you take one or two pieces of information that you can use tomorrow so you can be more effective, more influential as a speaker. So what are the six habits of successful speakers that I've noticed, that I've observed, that I've collected? So let's begin. The first habit of exceptional speakers is they do exceptional preparation. And by exceptional preparation I mean they really know their audience, they get into the audience's mindset, they ask questions, they walk in their audience's footsteps, they really find out as much as they can, they become aware of any cultural nuances, if they're really clever they will even pay a cultural compliment, they'll acknowledge the traditional landowners of wherever that particular venue is whether it's the Yorta Yorta people in Shepparton or the Noongar people in Perth or the Wathaurung people in Geelong, they will do that level of preparation. They'll know the venue really well and with me I travel around the country quite a lot and I'm presenting Friday morning at a new venue at Marangaroo in Perth, I've never been there before. So I will need to go there Thursday afternoon before they close and have a quick look, a quick walk around and become familiar with the room. I'll also arrive at 8.30 for a 9.30 start, one hour, that's the, my minimum getting ready for my venue. How's the room set up? What are the acoustics like? What's the lighting like? What equipment are you going to use? This is what exceptional 
speakers do. The other thing when you do the bigger conferences, make the audio visual guy. This is the person that runs your microphone. This is the person that sets up the data projection, the video, any equipment that you're going to use, make him your best friend. The audio visual guy can make you look really, really good. He can solve problems that otherwise would make you look not so good. The audio visual guy can also make you look very, very bad. You want to make him your best friend. If he's having problems sorting out a technical issue, don't be nasty towards him. Help him out. Encourage him. And do you have a workaround? Let's say your video doesn't play. Do you have a workaround? This is about exceptional preparation. Know your topic. You really need to know your information inside out. What if you have to present in half the time? You've got an hour keynote. They say, we want you to deliver it in 30 minutes. You've got an hour keynote. We want you to go for an hour and a half. The speaker before you hasn't turned up. You're planning to speak to 15 people and 80 people turn up. You're planning to speak with a colleague. So there's going to be two of you speaking. One of you might be going to talk about the, the operational and the logistical aspects of the new National Disability Insurance Scheme. And then your, your colleague is going to talk about the financial implications, the funding, the money side of it. And you get a phone call that someone, your, your colleague cannot make it. Uh, they've been in a motor vehicle accident, they're fine, but they won't be turning up. Can you present the other half of the presentation when your co-presenter does not turn up? The answer to all of those things should be yes, you can, because the audience has invested time, they've invested money, you need to allow the show to go on. So really know your topic inside out. And know the issues around your topic. Know the level of emotion. Know the difficult questions. What energy level should you bring to that room? Are you talking about downsizing? Are you talking about reducing budgets? Are you talking about contentious issues that not everyone is going to agree about or agree on? You really need to know all of this beforehand and anticipate those questions, anticipate those objections, anticipate that low energy in the room or that energy of expectation and you need to be able to deliver at that energy and that emotional level. Exceptional presenters, they do exceptional preparation. My Winston Churchill quote that scares a lot of people relates to Winston Churchill doing one hour of preparation for every one minute of speaking. So if I followed Winston Churchill's rule, this 30 minute webinar should have taken me 30 hours of preparation. Now I'm not Winston Churchill and I'm not a Prime Minister and I can assure you I did not spend 30 minutes, 30 hours preparing this. But that's Winston Churchill's paradigm and the reality is the more preparation you do, the more effective, the more confident, the more engaging you will come across. So you really do need to know your audience. You really need to know your venue. You need to know your topic and know those issues, those contentious issues, those problems, the questions, the question you don't want to be asked, know the answers to all of those things. That is exceptional preparation. And there is that saying that there's nothing you can do on the day to make your presentation, to make your workshop a success or a failure. It's kind of predetermined by the level of preparation you've done. Exceptional speakers speak without notes. They speak extemporaneously. It's not spontaneously. It's not off the cuff. It's not without notice. It's not ad-libbing. It's speaking with so much 
knowledge, so much preparation that they don't need their notes. It doesn't mean they don't have notes. It doesn't mean they don't have a script. It means they know their content so well that they can speak without constantly reading. When the speaker stands behind a lectern or stands up front and reads word for word from their notes, or even worse, reads word for word from their PowerPoint presentation, they are not going to engage the audience. They're not demonstrating a high level of credibility, a high level of confidence, a high level of competence to the audience when you're just reading. So I know it may be hard, but where you can get away from the lectern and speak without notes. You may need to learn mind mapping. You may need to have a one sheet page with bullet points that you push to one side and just that bullet point is all that you need to move forward and speak for five or ten minutes on that particular topic. Then you might need to go back and glance at another bullet point but then once again you then move on for the next five or ten minutes speaking extemporaneously. On my sheet of paper, I just have a couple of words which generally relate to a story. And for example, I might talk about, the, the words on my page might say Sally Pearson. Now Sally Pearson was a 2012 Olympic gold medalist from Australia who won the women's 110 metre hurdles final. The reason I talk about Sally Pearson is she was interviewed before the race and she was asked if she was nervous and she said of course I'm nervous. If I wasn't nervous I would not be ready to race. I use this in a public speaking context. If you're not nervous then you're not ready to speak. So that story enables me to expand about the nerves and the normal role of public speaking and I've got content for five to ten minutes just from having one word. And I do do a webinar, I think I've already run it this year, on how to speak without notes. It's a one hour webinar on all the tricks and mind mapping is just one of them to enable you to get before an audience and speak without a notes, to speak without your notes. Exceptional speakers do not read from a script, they do not read from their PowerPoint presentations. The third thing that exceptional speakers do is they put the audience first. One of the things I see with speakers constantly doing wrong is they keep talking about themselves, their own interests, what they want and why they are very good and why they are the expert and why they are the hero and how they've overcome their adversity within their own life, which may be really nice. And I gave you a brief introduction of my role moving from a person who stutters to a person who does public speaking for their living. But I don't want to dwell on that. So you need to put the audience first. Why does the audience care? Why are you tuned into this webinar? It's because you want to take your speaking to the next level. You want to step up. You want to have be more influential. So when you speak, people listen to you. What's in it for them? Imagine if you could be more confident and less nervous. Let's say I was doing Overcome Your Fear of Public Speaking Workshop. Let's say you could speak before a hundred people without that debilitating anxiety, that absolute fear that rises up from within. When you tell your stories, make sure the audience is the hero. This is what great speakers do. So everyone in the room walks out and thinks, wow, I can do this. I know the way forward. A lot of the highly paid celebrity speakers, not all of them, but a lot of them, those that have won gold medals, have played cricket, played football, they talk a lot about themselves and their stories and their journey and they put themselves the hero as the hero. Now that's good for inspirational speaking or maybe for stand-up comedians, but it's not good for generating change, for engaging the audience, for creating a different outcome from moving people to a different place. And one of the things I always encourage people to do is what is the purpose of your presentation? 
what do you want people to do when they leave the room as a result of listening to you? And if the answer is nothing, then really why are you speaking? Put your audience at the front of your presentation, make them the hero and empower them to go out and be the carriers of the change, the new messengers and that's what exceptional speakers do. That is the art of charisma, empowering your audience. So every time you speak, ask yourself what is in it for the audience and remind yourself this presentation is not about me, it is about the audience. Just going to pause for a moment. Any questions? Type away any comments. Is anyone concerned about having to present without notes? And I'm not saying that you have to throw your notes out straight away, but do you have the courage to get before the audience without the notes? Does that seem impossible? What is the barrier to you presenting without notes? Do you do the level of preparation I described? Do you really think about the audience? So Pauline has commented that it's really difficult to speak without notes and it does, it feels really hard. And just to clarify here, when you start out on a new topic, and let's say in your everyday work, maybe HR, human resources, gives you a new topic to speak on or to train on every few weeks. That becomes really good, uh, really difficult because you don't own the content. But once you work out what you're about, your core purpose in, in your presentation, and you do more and more of that type of presentation, my forte is overcoming fear. Uh, overcoming fear in public speaking, overcoming fear in life and how to play a bigger game. I can get before an audience and deliver my content flexibly, half an hour, one hour, one and a half hours. Send me an email if you want to Pauline and I'll try and link you to a previous webinar on some tips to present without notes. I think I've got a blog post on presenting without notes as well. It can be done. There are a few tips that you can do and I know it feels impossible and it feels really scary but it can be done. It should be done if you really want to engage the audience. Brilliant. Let's move on. And I alluded to this when I spoke about not using notes, I mentioned try to get away from the lectern and just speak to the audience. So this is the second part of that. Come away from the lectern or come away from the desk if, you, if you're a trainer standing behind a desk. Great speakers don't put barriers between them. If you look at Steve Jobs on some of his Apple conferences, you can look at the YouTube videos, Steve Jobs just walks around the platform. He doesn't walk around aimlessly, he stays relatively still but he walks with purpose and he might walk towards uh, his device and he might hold it up, he might have a brown manila envelope that he goes and picks up and opens and reveals the iPad. When you stand behind the lectern, you're just putting a barrier between you and the audience. And what that barrier says, you, you can't have all of me. You can have some of me, but I'm not going to give you 100%. Whereas this gentleman over here, he's got no barriers. You can see everything that he does. And this takes a little bit more courage, I must admit. So try to come out from the lectern. Now, when you do come out from the lectern, um, use the platform with purpose. Don't wander just from left to right to left to right. This is the cat on a hot tin roof. It's about staying mostly centred and then maybe moving to one point in the room for a while and stay there for three or four minutes and then maybe you move to another 
point. But move with purpose as opposed to the aimless wander. Just in terms of the lectern and the no lectern, you need to watch TED Talks. Uh, more and more www.ted.com and you can get rid of that dot. So it's TED.com. TED stands for Technology, Education and Design. TED has revolutionised public speaking. They've been going for about 10 years now. They don't have lecterns and they encourage their presenters to do limited or no PowerPoint. So watch TED Talks and look at some of the different people and how they engage the audience not using the lectern, not standing behind the podium. So I want to encourage you to come out from the lectern and be present 100% for the audience. Now I'm not sure if you, in casting your mind back, I'm not sure if you can remember, I guess the two careers of Hillary Clinton. Her first career was as First Lady, wife of Bill Clinton, the President of the United States of America. All her press conferences she delivered behind the lectern. Her second career was as Secretary of State to Barack Obama in his first term. Most of her press conferences were delivered standing alongside the lectern. So she had notes on the lectern, she could put her hand on the lectern, but she wasn't constrained by standing behind the lectern. And now they're talking about Hillary Clinton standing to be the next US President. So her communication skill has really come a long way and people have commented on the free nature of her speaking because she's removed the barrier of the lectern. Really great speakers are passionate and excited and pleased to be there. Are you passionate about your topic? Are you excited to be there? It's four o'clock in Perth, it's seven o'clock, it's after four o'clock in Perth, it's after seven o'clock in Melbourne. Some people might say it's almost beer o'clock in Perth and it probably is beer o'clock in Melbourne. But I want to be here. I'm not thinking about my cold beer in the fridge, I want to be here. This is, this is my life, this is what I do, this is what I love and that needs to come out of your pores. So those really great, those really engaging speakers are passionate about what they speak about and they love to be before that audience. Even the tough audience, even the audience of the knockers, the doubters, even those captive audiences, you know, the year 12, the 17 year old high school kids that don't want to be there but they're captured in that lecture theatre and you're the guest speaker. You as the speaker need to be excited and pleased to be there. In describing the attitude that all speakers should have, I simply say, you should have an attitude of, at this moment, there is no place in the world that I would rather be than speaking to you guys right now. Can you bring, can you create that passion, that excitement, that there's no place I'd rather be than speaking to you, tough audience of accountants, of financial planners, of non-believers, of knockers, can you bring that passion and, and that excitement? That's what exceptional speakers do. They're always passionate and excited to be there. And the sixth thing that I've noticed, is they believe in their messages. It's called conviction. Do you believe 100% in what you're saying? The simple fact is if you don't believe in what you're saying, then why would anyone else? So you must believe in your own message. They say the first sale is to yourself. Would you buy what you're selling? Because if you don't, I'm unlikely to buy it. So just run that scanning, it's really marketing 101. 
and one of the things that people look for in a salesperson is their own self-belief in their message. And you can call this congruency. So your actions, your life, your body language, and your message must all be congruent. So the time management guru is brilliant at time management, teaches it for a living, who starts his workshop 10 minutes late or finishes five minutes late, is not really congruent with his message. And I know stuff happens, but you really need to make sure that you walk the talk and you talk the walk. Even if HR gives you a tough message to go out and deliver, or your manager gives you a tough message and you don't believe in it, then, so you don't have conviction, what could happen is the audience that you're trying to give the message to, they won't believe it either. And maybe you are the wrong person to deliver that message. So this is just really the simple stuff that really effective, really confident, engaging speakers have. Just pause for a moment and type those questions in. Feel free to put your hand up if you want me to. So how does one know when nerves have become unhelpful? I guess when the audience tells you that you're looking really nervous and it's detracting from your presentation. So let me take you back to another short story. Most of you have heard of Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr is the drummer for the Beatles. He's been playing drums for 50 years. Ringo Starr has a nickname. They call him Pukey in the Sky with Diamonds. Ringo Starr vomits in the bucket goes to the bathroom, vomits in the toilet before most performances. He's then really nervous for the first 10 minutes, so this is two to three songs, so he's a drummer that's vomited in the bathroom, in the bucket, and is now nervous as anything, but in no way does that detract from his performance. So in other words, his nerves are not unhelpful in his performance. The gauge is what does the audience think? And I would just simply say to someone after your presentation, what do you think my core message was? What do you think, what's your next steps? And if they give you back what you wanted them to say is your core message, and they've got your call to action, i.e. your next step, then you've done a really good job. You could also ask the question, how nervous did you think I looked during that presentation? And if they say, well, I don't know, maybe a little bit nervous, but I've got your message, then you can put your nerves aside. Um, I don't have time to go in, into this webinar, but one of the things I teach is you don't get rid of nerves in public speaking, rather you learn to live with your nerves and still speak effectively. I also mentioned that nerves is a state of self. Some people say a state of selfishness. So when you're nervous, you are choosing to focus on your own internal physiology, your own internal chemistry. You're noticing your sweaty palms, your pulse rate, rather than focusing on the audience. What does the audience want? Are they awake? Are they nodding? Are they falling asleep? Is someone putting their hand up for questions? Are they looking at each other? Are they engaged? You need to be 100% present for your audience. Focusing on your nerves does not allow you to be 100% present. So you kind of got to put your nerves to one side, i.e. vomit in the bucket, and then go on stage and do the best that you can. If the audience says, you're so damn nervous, I have no idea what you said, then you may need to invest in some relaxation, uh, some anxiety reduction type workshops to get that that nervousness down. 99% of times people I see, their nerves do not interfere with their ability 
to be an engaging speaker. So thank you for that question, Jen. Just to wrap up, I've got a, two more upcoming webinars as I mentioned. I'm doing staggered time, so please let me know how you go with the times. This one's 4 p.m. West Australian time, which I know through a few Victorians. Tuesdays, 17th of March, how to make your message stick. And this is, a lot of this comes from Chip and Dan Heath. Why do some messages stick and some messages fade into obscurity? Uh, this is a paid webinar. The webinar after that is common mistakes people make when they tell their stories. So storytelling is one of the ways you don't use notes because you tell your stories. I've just told two quick stories. I've told one about Ringo Starr and I told another story about Sally Pearson. I also briefly told a story about myself. So if that interests you, please enrol for those, uh, those webinars. They're on my website. I've got some workshops coming up as well uh, all over the place. So please just go to my website. Um, I don't know that if you want to see them or not, uh, you can just go to my events page and Perth, Bunbury, Melbourne, Bendigo, Mildura, Yuchuka, Karatha. So please share my workshops with any colleagues or friends. And uh, if I can be of any assistance, please send me further emails. And that's really it for now. Any last questions? Any final questions? Good. Thanks for your participation and I look forward to speaking to you on a webinar soon and remember it's what you do rather than what you learnt from today. What are you going to do differently? How are you going to move to be a more exceptional speaker? Is it the level of preparation? Is it trying to wean yourself off notes? Is it coming away from the lectern? I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thanks for your comments and bye for now.